Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Kate. Thank you for coming back. If you're joining me again, if you're joining me for the first time, welcome. If you've not watched any of my previous videos, please do that because the information here real, really builds on what I've said before. I've spoken about us as human beings in the context of consciousness. I've spoken about the fact that we have a body of consciousness that's fully formed and it has its own spiritual makeup, just as we have a genetic makeup, our spiritual bodies have a makeup of their own that make them unique. Um, I've spoken about the fact that we communicate as consciousness with consciousness using the spiritual language of emotion and that that language is is spoken or communicated by you using your unique voice you have a specific way of doing things which is why our relationship to this information and our relationship to consciousness must be a deeply personal thing we have to get used to using the spiritual language of emotion and we do that by really practicing as you its use as often as we can one of the ways in which we can practice the use of the spiritual language of emotion is to observe the way we feel about things that are around us, our physical environment. And what you can do is start to deliberately place your attention on different things and just notice how you feel about those things. Move around your home in your mind's eye and start to notice how you feel about spaces like your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, your bathroom, your backyard, your garage, whatever kind of dwelling you live in. Begin to observe how you feel about different elements of your physical environment. That's teaching you different vocabulary words. You can allow your mind to go beyond your physical environment into the outside world. Notice how you feel about things there. You, doing this is teaching you the vocabulary of your spiritual language of emotion. And once you really know that vocabulary, you can start the process of putting those words together so that you're telling consciousness something specific about what you want. Remember, consciousness responds to us in really specific ways. It is a faithful replicator of the information that we impress on it. So it's really worthwhile getting to know how to use this spiritual language of emotion. Now, I've also spoken about the fact that I encourage us to have a tangible and personal relationship with our bodies of consciousness, to identify these bodies of consciousness as being ourselves. In doing that, we suddenly open up to ourselves a whole wealth of resources and capabilities that perhaps we didn't realize that we had before. It boosts our confidence. It helps us to eliminate anxiety and fear, which are the only forces, and doubt, which are the only forces capable of pre preventing us from achieving what we're trying to achieve when it comes to manifestation. Now, in this clip, I'm going to share with you an exercise, something that those who are familiar with Neville may have come across or will know, but this exercise really strengthens that relationship between your body of consciousness and your human aspect. And I can't emphasize enough, strongly enough, how it important it is that we not only identify our bodies of consciousness as being ourselves, but that we begin to hand over control to that body of consciousness. Once you do that, you're gonna be able to manifest anything you want guaranteed absolutely guaranteed. Okay, so in this exercise, it doesn't require you to be um, in any special condition. You don't need to be lying down. You don't need to be necessarily particularly relaxed. Um, if you feel that those things will help you do that by all means, but you can be going about the course of your normal day. And what you're doing is that even while you are performing something with your physical body, you are going to travel around your physical space. Now, it's preferable to do this to mentally travel to a room that you're not in, if you're in your house right now, if you're in an office space, if you're in a supermarket, you're going to travel to a space that is adjacent to where you physically are, to where you physically are, but you can't be there yourself. You're going to move there using your body of consciousness. And what I want you to do is just begin to see the space. So it's important that it's a space you know well. So it's easy for you to picture that space. So let's say you're in your living room right now. I want you to travel, let's say, to your kitchen, your bathroom, your bedroom, perhaps just outside your front door, a space you know well. And while you're watching TV, listening to me, whatever it is you're doing, just allow yourself to engage with that, that physical environment. Okay, so you can see what's going on. Hopefully you can hear, well, not hopefully, I want you to hear what's going on. 
I want you to perceive any odors. This is using your subjective senses. Feel the surface of the ground that you're standing on, um, the force of the, the ground, of the surface of the ground acting upward into your feet. Start to notice that feeling in your shins. So feel the weight of yourself on the ground, on the surface that you're standing on. I want you to use your hands to touch something in that space. Use your fingers or your palms. And it doesn't matter if these feelings aren't particularly strong for you right now, but the more you do it, the stronger it will be. Now, here is a fantastic tip. To make the experience of your subjective sense more powerful than what you are physically experiencing in the same moment, make sure that what you are experiencing subjectively is pleasurable. It must excite you. It could even arouse you. But if you do that, if the sensation you have while you are engaging your, your subjective senses are pleasurable relative to what you're experiencing physically, that uh, those feelings will be stronger. Now, some of you will get what this means. For those who don't, it's this. When the experience of the subjective body of consciousness or the, the body of consciousness using the subjective senses is stronger than the physical, you have deferred control to your body of consciousness. Now you can do this at will. You can do this as often as you like. When you're doing this exercise for the first time, do it for as long as is comfortable, which is why it's good that if that you're not sort of too um, relaxed, eyes closed and all of that. It's really good if you can if you can do it that way, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with you being relaxed and all of that, okay? What you are practicing is shifting over control from your human aspect to your body of consciousness. And of course, when you are able to do that at will and to sustain that for as long as possible, you can start to tell consciousness all manner of things and you will not have to deal with your human self, your human aspect, telling you that something is not possible for you. The reason for this is because your body of consciousness, being consciousness, already knows that all things are possible for you. Not only are they possible, that they are already a part of you. And so there is no barrier to you having, being or doing them. Okay, so just to reiterate, while you're going through a normal physical reaction, Travel subjectively to another space that you are not physically in. Engage with that space using your subjective senses and experience something pleasurable. Now, it could be something in that space. So when you're choosing the space, think about that. It could be something in that space that makes you happy. So for me, if I'm watching TV, being in the kitchen, baking a cake, my favorite thing, <laughs> is going to be more pleasurable than me watching TV. Now, if I engage in that act and can feel using my, and can really engage in that mental space using my subjective senses, and what I'm doing is pleasurable, I have switched control. I have switched authority to my body of consciousness. I really want you to try this exercise for a few days. You are going to be able to use these techniques to manifest the things you want, which is so important for us, not just in this moment, but at all times. Please try this technique. It will really make a difference to you. Not only does it strengthen the relationship, the bond between your physical body and your body of consciousness, but it is making you more powerful in a meaningful way. Now, this exercise is not subjected to any external condition. You can be absolutely anyone going through anything right now and be anywhere. These techniques are going to change your life. I want you to start this. I want you to build that relationship, that bond between your physical self, the person you believe yourself to be, and your body of consciousness, the person you really are, and see what happens. Just start now. This is a very practical, simple exercise. It does take practice. It is so much fun. You might find yourself doing it all the time. And in the next clip, 
we're going to be talking about how we can use this relationship to its fullest advantage. Please share this information with someone that you feel may benefit from it. I love sharing what I'm sharing with you and there is so much more to come. I'm only giving you a taste in these clips. There really is so much more to come, but I want people to develop this relationship first because we're laying a solid foundation. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next clip.